Welcome to this first lesson that I'm going to give on some simple, simple-ish, should I say, endgame techniques. Now, to become a good chess player, you have to be a rounded player. I'm known for my attacking aggressive chess, but I'm a grandmaster, so I also, I would say, are pretty good at other areas of the game. I mean, even the ending, I know my basic techniques and my basic checkmates, and to become a good chess player, you need to know these basic end games. And in this little series, I'm going to try to help you achieve those goals. And what this video is going to deal with is the checkmate of knight and bishop versus the lone king. Now, this is a notoriously hard and tricky checkmate, but hopefully with this simple video, I'm going to teach you some basic techniques to make this a lot easier for you to achieve and to win. Now, you might not get this so often in a game or ever in a game, but the techniques you use in this can be applied to other areas of the game and other parts of the ending. So it's certainly something that you should know. And there's been some famous cases throughout chess history of grandmasters failing to be able to win this position when they have bishop and knight. One, of the, one case was Vladimir Apician, a very strong grandmaster, over 2600 failing to win this. And another case was the former women's world champion, and that was Anna Yushino, and she failed to win this in her world championship match, which must have been most embarrassing because she was from Russia and she had two well-known Russian grandmaster coaches with her at this grandmaster tournament. And you'd assume in every Russian school they teach these endings to babies, basically, out of the cot. As soon as a baby starts to walk and talk, this is the kind of stuff they teach them. And this is what I'm going to try to do for you. So I can only imagine their horror when their um, pupil failed to win with this technique. So the key thing to remember is the W technique. And that is something we're going to look at later on. And this position you see in front of you here is a key position, in my opinion. If you're attacking, so if you have the bishop and knight, this is a position you can force on the board. And from this position, this is where it gets tricky. So we're going to start with this and then move to a more flexible position. But this is your aim position. Now, when you are attacking with bishop and knight, you want to try to force, rule number one, your opponent's king to the same colour square as your bishop. So in this case, you have a light square bishop, so you're trying to force your opponent's king to a corner, in this case, a8 or h1, which is the same color square as your bishop. Then you can force checkmate. So obviously, if you're trying to defend this position, a key thing to remember is keep your king in the center as long as you can, but then aim when you're forced to, to put your king in the opposite colored squared corner to your opponent's bishop, the dark square. And this position is a position which we now see the W technique in action. And this is a key thing. All you have to remember if you're trying to remember this checkmate is a W technique you use with your knight. And this is a technique where your knight creates a W shape on the board to stop your opponent's king from escaping and to force it into the light square. Now, the key thing to remember with your knight is that the knight goes to e5 and then often to d7 and then to c5 and even to b7 and this technique here of the knight and king combining in this pattern which we'll see in motion very shortly will force your opponent's king into the light square and this is the key w technique you can see it's a w technique as the pattern which occurs on the board and the funny thing about this, and I think the reason a lot of people struggle, is that when you use this technique, it does seem like your opponent's king will escape into the open, but it won't. It will be trapped. So let's see what I mean by this W technique. So we we'll take this position here with black to move, and we'll see how we can get this position a bit later. Now, let's say the black king tries to run away and run back into the center of the board. Well, here, what do we do? Well, now we start the W technique. So we want to stop our opponent's king escaping to D7. If we moved our king to E6, our opponent's king would simply go back to F8 
and threaten to come into the corner again. This doesn't help us. So we have to use the W technique. Our knight does this first move to e5, stopping our opponent's king escaping to this square. Now, how can this help? Well, where does the king go? If the king now goes to f8, the W technique comes into action. Our knight creates this W. First of all, it's a V shape. It goes to D7 with check. The only square for black to move to is to E8. And here, think about the best move here as you go along. Well, the best move is now to shuffle your king over one square to E6. The black king only has one square to move to. Where is that square? It is this square here and to d8 so again during this technique you still have to try to think and use, use your brain to the best of its abilities pause this video if you need to and i'll tell you good practicing techniques afterwards but you've got to use the combination of your not all three pieces really but mainly your knight and king so what is the best way to try to force the black king over to a8 here have a think about it pause the video if you need to because remember black is threatening to escape to c7 it might be okay if you allow that, but better not to. Well, the best move here is king to d6. And now black has two options. He should probably try to start running back towards h8. When if he can escape to f7, his position improves. How do we stop that? We go bishop to g6, check. His king only has one square to move to d8. And now you continue the w technique. Your knight has moved to d7, so what should we play here? Knight to c5. Look at the knight's root. We have created a w shape. I'm trying to reinforce these ideas by repeating myself. Now the king only has one square to move to, c8. So what do we play here? Well, we have to be a little bit careful, do we not? Because if we go now king to c8, our opponent will run back to d8. And he's going to try to escape on the dark squares and our bishop now cannot stop his king from escaping and neither can our knight so each stage in this technique you need to move with care now when you're doing a lot of endings even rook and king versus king you need to use a technique called zhuzhuang to waste a move in a lot of cases to improve your position and this is one of those cases where it's best to try to put your opponent into Zhuang. So you want to be in a position where it's your opponent's move. So you really need to waste a move here without making your position worse. So a very good move here is just something like bishop to h5, and hopefully I'll explain this and make it clear why in a second. Well now, if the black king goes towards the light square corner, that's what we want to do. And now if the opponent goes back to d8, compared to last time, our king is opposite our opponent's king so he cannot escape to e7 so we can continue using the w technique now knight to b7 check he only has one square to move to this waste of a tempo has been very good for us and now the king comes to c6 and you can see we're slowly pushing it over to this side of the board he only has one move here king to b7 and really now the w technique has worked our knight has moved all the way to e5 d7 c5 to b7 so we've created this w on the board our opponent's king is now trapped in the corner and when we have it trapped on these three squares or four squares in some case we don't need to worry about the w technique anymore we just got to keep it where it is and there's a number of ways to win this position let's just see if i can manage to do it here um well first of all i want to stop my opponent coming back to c8 so i will take that square away from my opponent's king Let's say my opponent now tries to run this way, king to this square. I want to stop him coming to a6. My bishop is stopping c8, so I need to use my other piece naturally, knight to c5. And now my opponent is only trapped in these three squares. King to b8, and now what can I play here? Well, something like king to b6. Now he only has two squares he can move to. Let's say king to a8, and here, Let's see if you can work out the checkmate. Pause the video if you need to you need to do that. Remember what I said about losing a move. You need to combine all these moves, but if you can't improve your position, you need to use the technique of Zugzhuang and lose a move. Pause the video now. Well, the simplest way to checkmate here is bishop to f5, king to b8, 
And now knight to a6 check, king to a8, forced, bishop to e4, checkmate. Very simple, this W technique, once you've picked it up. So let's just dive back to the key position again. Let's start right from scratch and just go for this one more time. And then we'll see how you get it from a random position. So this is the key position. And White's last move was bishop to h7, stopping the black king getting to this corner. So now the black king runs, king to e8. So you now start the W technique, knight to e5. Now, in the last case, we looked at king to f8, which looks like the most natural way to play. But in actual fact, black's best defense is try to run this way on the dark squares and escape out here. Because if you think about it naturally, there's a lot of air. There's a lot of air on the queen side for black to escape to. So what happens here if he tries to escape like this? Well, again, you still use the W technique. You need to use the combination of your king and knight. And I think... Personally, this is the hardest thing to grasp about this position because you have to let the king come to c7 here. But our knight and king can stop it coming any further out of the board. So you need to use your knight and king. You can't go knight to d7 yet because you'll lose your knight. So king to e6 is a key first move. And now the black king tries to run forwards. King to c7. Looking like it might run away. We use the w technique. Knight to d7. The knight has created first the V, later on the W. And now the black king, well, let's say it tries to escape even further. King to C6. What do we play here? Well, we can't really let it escape to B5. But in actual fact, the king is pretty much trapped here. And I think the next move is the hardest thing to grasp. Because it looks like the black king is escaping. But in reality, it's not escaping. So try to pause the video now and think of a way you can stop the black king coming to B5 here. Bishop to d3, very good move. The black king can now not escape to any of these central squares, so it is forced backwards. And again, you're kind of using little techniques here to achieve what you want to achieve. So let's say the king goes to c7. And now again, you want to cut this king off even more and force it back another rank. How can you do that? Pause the video if you need to. Bishop to e4 now, a very nice move, because again, the bishop controls these squares here, your king controls d6, and your knight controls b6. So the black king is yet again forced backwards. And here, after something like king to c8, we can now use the combination of our three pieces to force it into the corner. Something like king to d6, let's say he tries running to d8, we don't want to allow it to run into the opposite color square to our corner, so we've got to take control of e8. Bishop to g6, king to c8. The next move should now be forced into your brain here, the w technique, your knight and king. Do you move your knight or king first? One is a mistake, one is the correct move. Think logically which move is right. Knight to c5, the correct way to play. Um, because if you play king to c6, well, your opponent can now threaten to come to e7. We do not want to allow this. So knight to c5, and after something like king to d8, we finish the w technique. Look again, the knight has created the w here. We force our ki opponent's king to c8, king to c6, and we get the same position we had before. We, we've created the w technique. We just use our bishop now to take away the c8 square and the knight to take away the a6 square. So very easy. So hopefully you now got the grasp of the W technique. Now let's just look quickly at maybe one of the worst cases you can have in this position, 